Well, good morning and welcome to a really, really sunny keel. Yeah, it's, it's miserable. It's eight o'clock in the morning. I've been up since five. Yay! We're on our way to Hooton Park Kart Circuit for the inaugural GX UK Series O-Plate. Uh, my preparation for this has been a little rubbish. I was supposed to be there yesterday, but I've been preparing two carts because Tom Angier, Mango Motorsport on YouTube, I'll link him up here, um, is running in my second cart and I kind of prioritised sorting his car out and took a load of bits off my car. Just charging the Tesla. Uh, I think we've got 75% battery. Again, to try and get up to 80, so probably about another five minutes. Then we'll go get back on the journey, do the last 52 miles, go and meet the rest of the boys in Hooton. So I will see you in a minute at Hooton Park. So, welcome to Hooton. The slowest part of the journey is actually trying to get to the track. This is the current situation. I feel like we're on some kind of Top Gear King Safari special. The potholes and stuff are insane. Oh, look, look at this. Here it is, Hooton Park. It's like I'm assuming it's an oil refinery or something. Or a chemical plant. I'm sure whatever it is, is uh, going to shorten uh, my life by about 25 years. Not quite GYG, is it? Got to find the boys when we get in here, try and work out where everyone's parked up. Get the cart out, which is bouncing around in the back horribly. Tom Stalker! Hello! Morning! <laughs> uh, yeah, not a clue who the is. No. I'll go back up there. Hello! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a bit nervous about getting my arse in that child's seat. Can you breathe? No. <laughs> Good luck, try not to die at T1. Oh, fuck. Sunday morning, race day at Hooton Park. It's nice and sunny, a bit rainy. Joe's having a chill out, he's tired, he's drunk too much. <laughs> Just getting the carts ready to go out. Uh, yesterday went pretty well. Are you still sucking dick? Yep. <laughs> so yesterday went pretty well. Was what, nine tenths quicker than Tom Stalker? So I'll take that. Don't know whether he was sandbagging or just genuinely shit. Sandbagging apparently. So um, yeah, I'd love to show you some footage of that, but unfortunately uh, running the cam box, it turned out to be uh, not recording when the thought it was recording. So, the cart's all ready, good to go. We're going out for warm up in a minute. What's your over expectations? Hello. What's your expectations for the uh, day, Tom Stalker? Uh, to send Mr. Hicks into the wall. Nice. Heat one. Hicks in the wall. No, warm up. So, he can't make heat one. Like it. Good plan. Right. Off to the track. You on my mind a lot. Don't need no time. Watch. I don't know how I got. You in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay, miss you every day. You like my oxygen. Make it seem like the bar to them. Got my heart no bar to them. Just don't take couch. My way, the neighbors up. But you didn't break you out. In the end, we gon' get this out. Then we gon' hit the shower. Part two, we don't need no house. Mister, you gon' get this because you need a couple of shots. Copy my steel. Business back, that ain't no cap and wheel. No cap and wheel. Plastic bars when I copy my steel. 
Bars when I copy my steel. So yeah, total disaster of a first heat. Ended up with a DNF. Um, not Jay's fault that he ended up landing on top of me. I left him nowhere to go, having spun the cart and beached it where it was. So that's going to make it pretty difficult for us to get a decent start position in the final. So we really need some good results in Heat 2 and Heat 3 to try and nail down a good starting position for that final. Even though it's a DNF, it was a great race, it was great fun, and hopefully watching that, it looks like great fun to you too. If you're interested in karting in 2024 and you haven't worked out what you're going to do yet, go over to the Access Karting website, just bang it in Google. Honestly, the series has been set up to be cost effective uh, for people that are just getting into owner karting for the very first time. The past three races I've done, I've just found it awesome fun. It's not been expensive. I'll detail that in a video that's to come in terms of how much it actually works out and how much it costs. There's also a Facebook group, so if you type in GX UK on Facebook, you can head over there. There's loads of people in there, loads of active chat, people posing all sorts of questions. So yeah, hop on over, ask a question, and maybe we can get you on the grid in 2024. Anyway, now it's time for Heat 2. So Heat 2. So I'll start from the back, we're starting in P9, we've got Brad Philpott in front of us as we cross the line and head into T1. Hopefully it's going to be clean as we go through there and give us the chance on the inside. Unfortunately, Tom Angier loads up George Massey and end up spinning. I signal for Brad that he can just go because there's no point squabbling and we don't want to be side by side into T2. As we come through, we've got Andy Hicks hot on our tail, coming through into the hairpin. We're going to take a slightly narrow defensive line, but that's going to force us wide, and Andy's going to get mega drive out there. So we're just going to signal him through because there's absolutely no point fighting at this stage. All we want to do is get a gap and get clear. We're now up behind Steve. Um, Andy's having a quick look uh, as we come down towards the chicane, and we've got Alex starting to make ground behind us. So we know that Alex is pretty tasty after. Uh, the first heat so what we absolutely don't want to do is uh, is get caught by Alex if we come out here. So Andy's starting to have a look down the inside of Steve Gross, he's clear, Andy's taking too shallow a line, overcooks it and he's going buckaroo style over the grass. We're just going to pull alongside Steve, hopefully out drag him down to the hairpin. Make sure that we're going to get on the brakes a little bit later than Steve, he's not going to fight it. Alex is pushing us through which is super helpful and we're going to get great traction and Alex and I both get through. We're up into P4. Pretty good five positions up from the start. I'll take that all day long. They're having a bit of a squabble and you can see the sliding around that's going on at the double left hand there. As we come down to the chicane, we've got a bit of a gap up in front of us to the P3 car now. So probably for us and the rate that we've been running it's going to be a little bit difficult to close that up so we've jumped on a little bit and we've got Andy down the inside of us coming up to the straight he's deploying Q DRS as we go into T1 nice clean move there from Andy he's a quick guy he's been on the podium every single um, round so far so Andy's just going to pull away from us and we've jumped on a little bit now and you can actually see Andy's a bit further up the road we know that Alex is behind us we're having a look around we can't see him Cutting to the back camera, you can see Alex is all over us. I think we're like a couple of laps from the end at this point. So, you know, there's a lot to play for. We need a good result after that DNF. I know Alex is keen for a good result, and Alex, like, storming up behind us there on the brakes, really late on the brakes into the hairpin. You know, give Tom Angier a thumbs up. He's lost his chain and is parked by the side of the road. As we come through the double left, we've got Alex behind us. Camera footage cuts out for a bit, so now we're coming into the chicane. chicane. Alex is right behind us. This is the final corner. Yeah, torpedo. You feel like a torpedo. Oh, it's racing. I'm <laughs> racing. <laughs> So let's have a look at that in slow motion again. I forgot to say, this is the final corner of the final lap. So we didn't get great drive out of the two left-handers. Alex did, he's all over us as we come through the chicane. I am quite wide coming into the last bend, but Alex dives down the inside. Nowhere for me to go as I've already committed to turn in and he just runs straight into the side of me. And all that's left for me to do is try and get the cart back on the track. So from running in a really solid P5, Coming up to the last corner, we've now dropped to P9. I wasn't best happy on the in-lap. This is uh, James Purchase, our series organiser, telling me to calm down. Sorry, sorry. You, op you opened and I thought, oh, out of the gap, and you closed it before I had a chance. Really sorry. Sorry, mate. Damn it. Because as you went in, you opened, and I was like, ooh! But you closed it much quicker than I expected you to. Yeah, it's all right, mate. 
These things happen. That was a shame because that was a really good fight. I'm sorry I ruined it. I've got to say, I think that's pretty classy from Alex. Like, he came straight over at the end of the race. Apologetic. We had had a really good battle. I've not got enough time in the video to show it, but we were battling for a good few laps. It was nice and clean right up until that point. And then, yeah, just, just last lap shenanigans, unfortunately. But it was classy of Alex to come over and say sorry. No hard feelings. And, uh, yeah, on to the next race. Now with a, a P9 uh, finish in, in that one heat and a DNF, we really, 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 really needed a good result in heat three. Unfortunately, uh, the camera failed and uh, it didn't actually record it, but I did, I think, turn in a P5 um, in heat three, which therefore meant that we went into the final with a P5, a P9 and a DNF, which was never going to put us in a good place. So yeah, the net result of those pretty awful heats is that we're going to start P11. So this is the final. We've got Steve on our right hand side, we've got Jay Jones who's new to the series uh, in front of us. We're going to leave a bit of gap and then pin it as we come up to the start line, trying to get a run on these guys. And we're going to go through the middle of Jay and uh, I think it's George Massey and get right on the bumper of Tom Angier as we come down to T2, which I'll take that all day long. We've gone from P11 to P8 within two corners, which is a pretty good result. So exiting the hairpin, trying to make sure that we've got good drive and that we're going to try and keep contacting this tricky double left-hander which was causing problems all day long. I was basically losing 1.2 seconds uh, versus my Saturday testing times um, through that corner alone. Also struggling a little bit with this final corner to get a good launch in this particular instance. Yeah, we've got a decent, decent launch out there. But what you'll notice in this, yeah, and the fatal error I made is that I didn't run the right gear. So I don't know why I didn't bother checking the revs that I was hitting um, in practice. Basically, I wasn't topping out. I had too much top speed on the car that I just wasn't realising. So everyone else had really good drive out um, of the corners. And that's Johnny Elliott, who just driven past. He's had a couple together with Andy Hicks and Brad. Um, so he's lost a, a number of positions. But yeah, we were running too much top, top end on the car. We just didn't have enough acceleration in the car. So although theoretically we could go quicker than anyone else down, down the straight, we were never getting anywhere close uh, to a terminal because of the velocity of the gear. So it really should have been a good few teeth higher than what we were. Uh, and you can see that people are just dropping us down the straight and it's going to make life really difficult for us. There's not, you know, nothing wrong with our engine. It's a decent engine, but we just cannot the acceleration that the others have got. So we're just trying to keep contact with the main group. Fortunately, or unfortunately for them, Alex and Lee are going to come together. So we're going to drive past Alex. Now we're going to drive past Lee and slot in into P5 as we come through the double left hand. We've got Tom Stalker in P3 and Tom Angier in P5. So both uh, members of the Man Mango Motorsport cult. So uh, we don't want to be uh, taking either of them out. Hear about it day long in WhatsApp. But watch this coming out the last bend. This is Lee, and watch this rocket ship. I swear to God, this is the fastest cut I saw all day down that straight. I didn't anticipate him being alongside us when we went into team. That thing is a rocket. I know he's running uh, more acceleration than me, and that definitely explains a bit of the catching coming out the last bend. But compared to when Andy or Brad on, that thing is a rocket. Like Lee was driving absolutely brilliantly in the final. You can see as we come up to the double left hand, he's got that drive, he's got that power, and he's down the inside again. Just too narrow. You know, thank, thank, thanks to Lee for backing out there and not coming together with us. Um, he was just so quick uh, in any straight sector. It caused us problems trying to keep him behind. And here we go again, down the straight. Don't think he got quite as good next this time. But you're going to see him make ground really quick now as we get up into to the sort of top end. Um, of the car through T1, we've managed to keep him behind again. Um, we're trying at the moment to, to find a gap to get past Tom Angier while trying to defend a bit from Lee. But again, he's going to have the overspeed here and he's going to be later on the brakes, braver on the brakes. Oh, and there's a little bit of contact. I'm not happy about it, I think it's quite hard. I think having watched it back, I, I don't think there's any problem with it at all. And just to compound the misery, Johnny's going to slip through there. Uh, on his way back up, you know, uh, he's P6, I think, there he ends up finishing P3, so absolutely awesome drive from, from Johnny there to, to get it through. But we're now down to P7. I know Alex is not going to be far behind, now starting to get worried about getting torpedoed. 
um, but we've got Lee and Tom going for it again at the hairpin. They make contact, bog each other down. Obviously, we can now save Tom, so we're going to deploy Bump Draft and push him through and hopefully us get through, which we did on the double left hand up. We've done too good a job pushing away, it's increased the gap, but I had no idea Lee was down the inside of us coming into that final corner. Again, showing the speed that he had down through that chicane section. He's now got Alex because he's had to back out uh, from attacking me all over the back of him. So there's now a bit of a four cart train emerging with Tom and Gia up in front, We're trying to close the gap and get back closer to him. Again, coming down that back straight, Lee's just got so much pace. He's late on the brakes, he's clean through. We're going to try to switch back and try and get him, but look, watch the acceleration as Lee pulls away. It's like a rocket ship out there. Great driving from Lee. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the last time we're going to challenge uh, Lee, basically, because he is rapid down the straight. And you're going to see as we come through the final corner, I think you're going to see the, the, the gap that he pulls on us here. Just, he's just keeping it on the track, he's using all the track. And then look at the look at the difference it's pulling out on us, catching on top. Uh, and that just shows the difference in gearing. Um, and obviously that rocket man suit that he's got on really made the difference in terms of straight line speed. So now I think we jumped ahead, we've got Alex closing right up on us. Um, so yeah, you know, we're getting flashbacks to the torpedoing of, of heat too. But um, as we come down towards the hairpin again, Alex there getting a good run over speed, he's down inside and he hits the front uh, of my car as he comes through. Again, I was really pissed off um, at the time, mainly because the, his back wheel hit my front wheel and from this point on the steering on the car just did not feel right. So we're desperate now to catch back up with Alex, um, we've got Jay Collins in front of us, he doesn't know we're there, um, we're just going through to lap Jay, he didn't know I was there and he decided in front of me I had to jump on the brakes. And that means that I'm now going to lose touch with that group. And that's basically, we ran around for a few more laps like that. This is the final lap, so just giving you a feel for what the final uh, lap was like, the gap. So you can see uh, they pulled out a good couple of seconds on me um, after that. I'm really struggling um, with the right hand front on the car. It just doesn't feel right, doesn't feel balanced. Um, just feel like we're, we're losing a, a load of speed. Uh, coming into the yellow flag, someone spun um, and is stranded on the curb out here. So I'm just going to go past them, making sure that we don't uh, collide with them. Through the chicane for the last time and then uh, out onto the final straight. But yeah, ultimately a uh, pretty disappointing fine. I think you can hear that across the line. So yeah, that's the inaugural O plate for GX UK. Um, we've done three races this year as the tester uh, for the full season next year. I have to say it's the most fun that I've ever had in a car. Um, I never thought I'd be able to race in owner driving um, and enjoy it as much as I do. Um, and, and yeah, the social sides of it's amazing. So yeah, if you want any more details uh, on this series for 2024, head over to the Access Karting website. For now, that's it from me. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. Please do hit the like button. It would be great to get some more subs and to get some more likes and for YouTube to finally start favoring some of my videos. Let me know what you thought of the style of my video. I didn't put any commentary over the first heat, but I did the second and the final. Let us know which did you prefer. Did you like just watching the action with a bit of music over the top of it, or does it actually help when the driver comments on what's happening? But that's it for me, and I'll be back next week with a video on my new car for 2024. But until then, bye.